Tim Tebow is addicted to fame. Tim Tebow cannot let it go. That's what this is. He's the same guy that was in Denver. Mm. He loves the attention. He craves the fame. He craves the limelight. And here we are again. I disagree with him. You don't go to the Mets double A or single A facility, start baseball 10 years after you've even played baseball, you didn't even play in college, if you want fame. What he does is he wants to compete. He's addicted to competition. That's what he is. And the reason why he gets a shot, a lot of it is because he's just such a positive force in the locker room and on the field and with the fans. That's my view. But what about Clay Travis? He's the founder of OutKick. Uh, Fox just bought it uh, now, so he's part of the family, uh, and he's president there. Uh, Clay, welcome back. Hey, I appreciate you having me, Brian. Uh, and I agree with uh, with what you were just kind of laying out there. I think Tim Tebow is addicted to competition. I think he is one of the fiercest competitors there has been. And it's not a good take. I think that was uh, Shannon Sharp on FS1. I understand some people are making that argument. I disagree with it. Uh, I, I think if Tim Tebow was addicted to fame, I mean, he could have gone on and been The Bachelor. Uh, you know, he could have yeah. his own reality television show. He is one of the most famous athletes of his generation. In, in all honesty, everything that has been connected to his fame has been connected to sports. He hasn't really started a tequila line. You know, he hasn't been somebody who's out there deciding, like I said, to do a reality television show or to cash in on his fame. Uh, if anything, he has been uh, completely connected to the world of sports. And I think he wants to you know, sort of squeeze every last ounce of athletic ability out of his uh, out of his pursuit. He went to baseball, right? I mean, he could have. If he just wanted attention, he could have uh, held on. He could have played in the XFL at quarterback. He could have done any number of things that would have made him a lot of money. I think he just wants to be able to compete at the highest level. I think he's a unique talent, and uh, he's a flashpoint because people believe that he's artificial and fake, and they don't like a lot of what he represents. So uh, a lot of people are saying, well, he took a knee. People didn't like that at the time. And then Kaepernick took a knee. He got a lot of criticism for that uh, because I th- he's an extremely religious guy. I guess he's born-again Christian. And then Kaepernick took a knee for a different person. Didn't like the country, uh, thinks uh, pr- police brutality is out of control, uh, and decided uh, also a lot of people think that Kaepernick uh, took a knee or took to the bench during the national anthem because he got benched. Uh, he got benched before that game. We'll never quite find out. The question of race being brought into this now. Why does Kaepernick, who's an actual quarterback and there's a need for quarterback in this league, never get another shot? And why does Tebow, who leaves to play baseball, why does he get another shot? Do you see race? No. I don't I don't see race involved at all. I mean, I understand why it's a flashpoint. There's a lot of people who make money in sports dividing us based on race. But I think the simple reason is almost everyone in the world of sports gets to keep and have an opportunity to continue to play as long as their talent exceeds their problems. Tim Tebow has no problems. He's never had an off-the-field related incident. There's never been an advertiser or sponsor uh, that said, I'm not going to watch the Denver Broncos or whatever team that he's on uh, because of what he's doing in the world of football. Uh, He's also, by the way, switching his position. Tim Tebow was not able to make it as a quarterback because he was mobile and because the, uh, the defense is caught up to what he did, which is very similar to Colin Kaepernick. Um, you know, Kaepernick's problems exceed his talents. And, oh, by the way, Kaepernick is no victim here. He's made far more money talking about how awful America is from Nike and many of these other woke corporations than he ever would have made as a backup quarterback in his 30s in the NFL. So uh, this is not a race issue. It's also not a victimization issue. Uh, Colin Kaepernick's not a victim here. He's maybe making more money off saying America is awful than anyone in the history of the United States, which is uh, certainly in the world of athletics he is. And you know what, Clay? Uh, He's about to roll out a book, Self-Published, which is uh, something that's going to talk about race in America. People think he's done a great thing. He'll never be a hero to me. Yeah, he also didn't write that book. I mean, you know, I I always think it's funny. You know, I've written a few books. I know you have, too. The idea that Colin Kaepernick sitting there in front of a laptop, like, uh, you know, adjusting or uh, writing any words at all would be so stunning to me. I think what he's probably doing is sitting with an author, talking out loud. They're taking his ideas, putting it into uh, written form. And, uh, and and frankly, I welcome his ability, as, uh, as anybody can, to be a part of the First Amendment discussion of ideas marketplace in this country. But I don't think Colin Kaepernick has, uh, has aided the discussion in any right. way in this country. In fact, I think he's actually made it a lot less safe for young uh, kids in America because he's convinced them that the police are the enemy 
and we're seeing murder rates skyrocket everywhere as a uh, as a result of uh, I believe a primary reason is that we're not letting police do their job because of uh, many of the athletes that have been outspoken and about Clay, how awful police yeah, are. The Obamas haven't helped at all. Now they're talking about how racial, how they're concerned about their kids when they go behind the car, that they, we don't know that the cops are going to uh, pull her over and, and hurt Sasha and Malia, which is unbelievable. They never talk like that. They were in the White House. Plus, they're surrounded by Secret Service, so it's not even plausible. Well, Here, also, the data doesn't reflect that that's likely to happen in any way to any child, right? I mean, like, the, 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 there are tens of millions of interactions between police and uh, citizens every single day of all races, uh, and every single year, I should say, and almost none of them end in a violent encounter. And guess when they do end in violence? It's when somebody resists arrest. What we should be saying is, hey, comply with police officers, and there will be far fewer uh, issues of uh, violence in this country. Yeah, uh, by the way, his, he's going to a place in with Tim Tebow, is, by the way, where his college coach was. Uh, he yes. now coaches the Jaguars. That's why Urban Meyer wants to give him a shot. He said, try tight end. Evidently, he had uh, two weeks of tryouts and looked fantastic. And they said, we'll give him a one-year deal, see if he makes it through tra- training camp. Here's a listen of uh, a place. You, you travel in news and you travel in sports circles still. So here's Kimberly Martin on ESPN talking to various people in the NFL about this Tebow signing. The skeptics, 54. It's it's shock, bewilderment, and also at best practice squad or watch. He might just retire before training camp. You know, I've heard coaches on on the Jaguars don't want Tim Tebow on the roster. Nothing against Tim, but it just is everything that comes with Tim. Around the league, people don't think this is a big deal. They see it more as Urban's chance to drum up interest and sell tickets down in Jacksonville where clearly they need to get um, some interest in the squad. Think there's some truth to that? Well, look, I mean, we're all in the entertainment business. I mean, if they told you that if you had a guest on, you would double revenue, I bet you'd put that guest on, right? And you're in the radio business. I mean, uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars historically have had major issues selling tickets. Now, they have uh, Urban Meyer, who obviously is connected to the Florida Gators. They have probably uh, the most exciting quarterback prospect in, in many years, and Trevor Lawrence now on the team. And Look, I started going to Florida, Georgia games uh, years and years ago when Tim Tebow was playing, great cocktail party, they call it, uh, down in Jacksonville. And the most popular shirt when Tebow played was a Jacksonville Jaguar colored shirt that said Draft Tebow. Uh, So, yeah, I think there are people who are more likely to go watch the Jacksonville Jaguars play because Tim Tebow is on the team. If he makes the team, that seems like a pretty good business move to me. I mean, I hire people because I think they'll help out Outkick. I'm sure uh, that's kind of the essence of business when it comes to hiring talent. You want to make money off your talent. I think that's likely with the Jags and Tebow. Right. Uh, Ultimately, the thing about sports is it's not who you know. It's what you can do. You could be the guest guy. Your your last name could be Lombardi. Uh, If you can't play, you're not going to. You're not going to even make the team. And if Tebow was so popular, the Mets were to give him a shot. They let him play in the minor leagues where he was a great mentor to these guys like Michael Jordan was. But there's no fame and glory in minor league Mets baseball in Syracuse. Believe me, I've been there. Max (laughs) Max Kellerman, who I know you know well, uh, he weighed in on Tebow. Cut 55. I do think, while he shouldn't apologize for any kind of opportunity he has, because he's really just getting a look, right? And he should take advantage. I do think it comes with some responsibility. I will insist that everyone is so privileged. Everyone should be treated with the same kind of respect and given given latitude to try to succeed and fail if they might and get opportunity. And since Tim Tebow enjoys that in a league that has maybe illegally stonewalled Colin Kaepernick. They can't even give him a look. Maybe Tim Tebow should stand up and say, you know what, I'm thankful for this opportunity. There's some people who don't have it and mention Kaepernick by name. I would certainly applaud that. Why? Do you think Kaepernick wants to play anyway? What do you think? No, it's a stupid take. Look, I mean, Max Kellerman is a woke idiot who works at ESPN and makes uh, well compensated to say ridiculous things like that. But look, The better analogy here is, again, going back to my talent exceed the problem. Antonio Brown got re-signed, a wide receiver for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, after being charged with rape. Uh, Deshaun Watson, 22 different women have accused him of sexual assault right now, starting quarterback for the Houston Texans. And he hasn't even been released or put on leave by the Houston Texans. 22 different women, Brian. 
Um, and I haven't heard Max Kellerman or any of the woke idiots at ESPN talking about the, the privilege that Deshaun Watson in, 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 is able to in, engage in that 22 different women can't even cost him uh, any kind of significant consequences for his job. He's not suspended. He's not ineligible. Uh, there's nothing that has happened in any way. Uh, and Tim Tebow out here uh, trying to make it as a tight end to make a million dollars a year at the age of 33 is somehow an offensive uh, version of the, uh, of the NFL's uh, unfairness. I mean, come on. This is just, I think, an absurdly ridiculous take. Uh, well, that's a good point. On all your analogies, I'm very curious what's going to happen with Watson, who demanded a trade, and then 22 women came, 23, and then now it's down to 22 women came forward. So does the team fight for him? Or does the team sit back and see if he can iron this out? Does the NFL jump in? I mean, I don't know where they go. They were accusers. These aren't legal cases yet. Yeah, I mean, here's what's wild, Brian. I mean, look, I do this for a living in the world of sports. There's been more criticism of Tim Tebow trying to make it as a tight end in the NFL uh, than there has been of Deshaun Watson being accused of sexually assaulting 22 different women. Um, If you want to make it a race-based discussion, the black quarterback is getting a big pass compared to the former white quarterback who's now trying to make it at tight end. Uh, That's a pretty fascinating dichotomy in my mind. Absolutely. And I want to bring it to basketball. I mean, New York, they're kind of excited. Nick's a good first time in like 15 years, and the Nets have the best collection of talent in the league. But for the most part, ratings are down substantially in TNT, uh, ESPN. Uh, So are they getting worried? Uh, Yet I see people like Dave Portnoy say it has the brightest future because they have this big online social media presence. No, I don't buy into it. Um, I mean, I think the NBA can have a bright future in China, uh, which is probably more important to their future right now than the United States, which is why they won't say anything negative at all about China and they rip the United States to the high heavens. Um, You know, a couple of stats for you. 10 million more people watched the uh, the national championship game between Gonzaga and uh, and Baylor, two religious you know private schools in college basketball, than watched any NBA finals game. Uh, the NBA, I think, down 13 percent this year, setting an all time low for the number of people that are consuming and watching their product. Um, and I think one of the challenges they may have if you use social media as a proxy is. Social media can be great for watching a two-minute highlight video, but the people who watch two-minute highlight videos don't buy season tickets and watch two-hour games. And so uh, I think what the NBA has done is uh, it has hollowed out its overall fan base by telling many of its fans that it finds them to be offensive based on their political views. Uh, I grew up, and I'm sure you do remember as well, Brian, like the idea the NBA sold was NBA action is fantastic. Larry Bird, Michael, yep. Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan. They tried to have a big tent, and now it seems like they are trying to restrict yeah. the number of people that are interested in their game. It's very interesting. Clay Travis, great points. That's why you're the founder of OutKick, and we bought it. Thanks so much, Clay. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.